We have here the case of Albay Electric Cooperative Inc. versus Aleco Employees Organization, which deals with the legal effects of assumption orders by the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment, including the award of back wages outside illegal dismissal cases. An electric cooperative holding a franchise for the retail distribution of electricity for the province of Albay had a labor organization which also served as the collective bargaining agent of the electric cooperative's employees. The electric cooperative suffered from financial distress. Thus, efforts were undertaken to rehabilitate it. A strategy that the electric cooperative pushed for was that of private sector participation. Under such strategy, the current employees of the electric cooperative shall be required to tender their courtesy resignation to give flexibility to the incoming private sector concessionaire, but they shall receive separation pay based on the existing collective bargaining agreement with the labor organization and shall have priority in rehiring based on the standards set by the concessionaire. However, the labor organization expressed grievance over the conditions set under the private sector participation strategy which was why it sought preventive mediation for unfair labor practices before the regional branch of the National Conciliation and Mediation Board. The electric cooperative and the labor organization, however, failed to settle their differences, and this constrained the latter to decide to strike. Subsequently, the private sector participation strategy was eventually chosen as the appropriate rehabilitation measure and a concession was awarded to a certain company. Still, the labor organization went on strike. Thereafter, notices of retrenchment were served on the labor organization's employees. As the labor dispute continued, the electric cooperative and the labor organization formally requested the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment to assume jurisdiction over the controversy. The Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment assumed jurisdiction on January 10, 2014 and correspondingly issued a return to work order of even date. In a resolution dated April 29, 2016, the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment upheld the validity of the retrenchment of the employees of the electric cooperative and ordered it to pay the retrenched employees their separation benefits in accordance with the collective bargaining agreement. It also ordered the electric cooperative to pay them back wages and other benefits computed from January 10, 2014 until the finality of said resolution. The Court of Appeals modified the said resolution dated April 29, 2016 and fixed the period of computation of the back wages awarded by the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment from the date of the return to work order on January 10, 2014 up to the issuance of the resolution dated April 29, 2016. The electric cooperative argued before the Supreme Court that the Court of Appeals erred in sustaining the award of back wages because, number one, it complied with the assumption order as early as January 14, 2014. Number two, back wages is awarded only to an illegally dismissed employee. And number three, if back wages were to be awarded, the same should accrue only until February 26, 2014 or the date when the returning employees last reported for work and not until April 29, 2016 or the date of the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment's resolution. Was the award of back wages proper? And if proper, was the limit to the period of computing back wages until April 29, 2016 correct? The court set forth relevant principles as follows. The effects of an assumption order issued by the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment under Article 278G of the Labor Code of the Philippines are twofold. Number one, it enjoins an impending strike on the part of the employees. And number two, it orders the employer to maintain the status quo. In cases where a strike has already taken place, the assumption order shall have the effect of number one, directing all striking workers to immediately return to work, and number two, mandating the employer to resume operations immediately and readmit all workers under the same terms and conditions prevailing before the strike. The status quo to be maintained under law refers to that which was prevailing the day before the strike. Furthermore, this obligation on the part of the employer generally requires actual reinstatement. Jurisprudence teaches that the purpose of maintaining the status quo is to avoid any disruption to the economy while the labor dispute is being resolved in the proper forum. The objective is to minimize, if not totally avert, any damage that such labor dispute might cause upon the national interest by occasion of any work stoppage or slowdown. 
the directive to maintain the status quo extends only until the labor dispute has been resolved. In the present case, the Supreme Court ruled that the award of back wages was proper. The court found that the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment assumed jurisdiction over the labor dispute between the parties on January 10, 2014 and issued a return-to-work order on even date under Article 278G of the Labor Code of the Philippines. Although the electric cooperative claimed that it admitted the striking employees to its premises on January 14, 2014, the court found that no actual work was given to the said employees. Instead, the court discovered that the electric cooperative confined these employees in a room for over three weeks. Furthermore, although the electric cooperative claimed that it tendered the salaries of the employees who actually reported back for work, it also admitted that the employees refused to receive the amounts it supposedly tendered because of disagreement on the figures. The court took this to mean that the affected employees were still not paid their wages and benefits for the period they were supposed to be reinstated. The court thus affirmed the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment's award of back wages. However, the court clarified that back wages were not imposed as a penalty for non-compliance with assumption order, but a satisfaction of the electric cooperative's obligation towards the employees as contemplated under the assumption order. In other words, said back wages corresponded to the amount ought to have been received by the affected employees if only they had been reinstated following the assumption order. The court further stated that an award of back wages outside illegal dismissal cases is not prohibited. According to the court, even in the absence of illegal dismissal in this case, the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment had the authority to award and was not mistaken in awarding back wages. In this regard, the limitation of the computation of back wages until April 29, 2016 by the Court of Appeals was affirmed. Following established principles, the Supreme Court ruled that the status quo mandated by the Assumption Order extended from the date of its issuance until the Secretary of the Department of Labor and Employment's resolution of the dispute between the parties on the said date of April 29, 2016.